Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel once again. This video is especially for the ICSC class 10 students. Uh, as far as I remember, in the last video for class 10th, uh, I gave you a, a brief introduction to the scene, uh, Act 3, Scene 2. Today, I plan to uh, first start with Act 3, Scene 3, then I'm going to move on to Act 3, Scene 4 as well. Now, if you remember in the last video, we, where we are talking about this Act 3, Scene 2, first I, start, I, I started talking about this, the, the two settings that are, uh, that are in play uh, in this particular uh, Merchant of Venice. Uh, uh, the settings such as in Venice as well as in Belmont and this is what we have observed from uh, from the first scene onwards now act one scene one the scene which starts uh, in a street of Venice oh, while moving on to act one scene two uh, the setting also changes we move on to Belmont in Portia's mansion now this uh, process it continues uh, even uh, in case of uh, act uh, two scene eight where, where we were somewhere in a street of Venice and Salarino and Salario, they were talking about uh, the departure of Bassanio along with uh, Graciano uh, for Belmont. And this is what uh, we came across, the continuation of that particular scene in Act 3, Scene 2, the last scene that I was talking about, if you remember, where Bassanio has finally reached, uh, finally reached to Belmont. He takes part in the game of casket uh, towards the beginning of the scene, uh, where Portia was pleading uh, Bassanio to wait. Uh, to pause for a day or few 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 months uh, before he takes the hazard but Bassanio was Bassanio uh, he was very very reckless it was very difficult for him to restrain his emotions for any longer and finally he takes part in the game of casket and ultimately he chooses the late casket and this is how he fulfills the condition by uh, choosing the late casket where uh, the time when he opens he gets uh, he gets the portrait of Portia and thereby fulfilling the the conditions that was laid down by uh, Portia's father. But I want you to concentrate on the last part of that scene, Act 3, Scene 2, if you remember. The last part of that scene, we come across the entry of the three characters. There's a messenger called Salerio from Venice. Along with him, there are two other characters, if you remember, Lorenzo and Jessica as well. And Salerio, the messenger, he comes with a letter which he, uh, which, which, which he gives on to uh, Bassanio. And the wordings of the letter, it was very, very shocking or rather a uh, uh, a hopeless message that uh, that the wordings of the message it, it it went went like something like that now the terms of the bond the timing that has already been filled and Shylock has already approached to the Duke and thereby he has already sent uh, Antonio behind the bus. So there is very limited time that is left for Antonio. If you remember all of us, uh, if we are aware about the, about, about the conditions of the bond, if you remember, uh, three, months, uh, three months time to pay that 3,000 decats. And in, in case uh, Antonio unable to pay the, 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 that 3,000 decats, he will have to give away that one one pound of flesh close from his chest so the last wish that was expressed in that particular letter if you remember uh, Antonio says that uh, he, 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 he desires to see Bassanio before he finally dies the time uh, 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 Bassanio, he, he seeks a permission from uh, uh, his, 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 his wife uh, by then, uh, Portia, a permission to go back to Venice to rescue or in other words to save or to be there at the time of need when his friend Antonio is already behind the bus. So that was all about that act 3 scene 2. Today, I'm going to start with this Act 3, Scene 3, where once again, there's a change of the setting. So, from uh, Portia's mansion, we, 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 we go to uh, the other setting of the play, uh, that is a street of Venice, somewhere in Venice. So, in this uh, particular scene, we come across four characters. Now, now, the first character that we are already familiar, and this character we have been, uh, we, 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 we have observed this character from the beginning of the act one, scene one, if you remember, there's a character called Salarino. So, there's a new character now, there's, a, uh, there's an Italian word for jailer, that is Geoler. There's a new, uh, a particular character who is only present for this very scene only. So, this jailer, and uh, 
Antonio with 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 handcuff, uh, you know, this gives us a, a particular image that the wordings of the letter in Acts is seen to. If you remember, those wordings were true. So by now, uh, Antonio has already been sent behind the bars. But we we don't get an idea that if uh, Antonio, if actually is behind the bars, if he is he has been imprisoned, then then what is he doing, you know, in the streets? So this uh, query is is gets cleared with the entry of Shiloh, and finally we come to know that actually this jailer, after being requested so many times, after being pleaded so many times by Antonio, he has fixed. a particular meeting between antonio and shylock antonio uh, th that was a last attempt for antonio to pray uh, to beg uh, for a mercy uh, to uh, to shylock if finally he forgives uh, the, the the conditions of the bond now one theme that is being reflected throughout this scene that is uh, that i have written out here as revenge versus mercy now this concept called re revenge versus mercy it has always been uh, always been a highlighted theme uh, across the you know plays written by william shakespeare now this is what we see even in the other text for isc uh, the tempest as well and there too this particular you know this this theme of revenge versus mercy has been reflected throughout the play where uh, Uh, the, the 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 central character of the play uh, prospero who had uh, all the uh, all the possible opportunities to take his revenge against his enemies but finally he decides to show his mercy and there was this uh, you know memorable uh, a memorable statement given by uh, prospero where he says that the rarer action is in the virtue not in vengeance so he says that it is the the rarest quality of a person is actually to show mercy not to take revenge So, while coming to this Act Three, Scene, uh, scene Three, uh, Antonio also indirectly he pleads uh, Shylock to show mercy. Uh, but uh, you know, we we all know about Shylock; he is too adamant, he is too rigid. So there is not even a single drop of mercy that is there in the core of his heart. So. this attempt you know this concept of revenge versus mercy this is also reflected when we go to the trial scene in act 4 scene 1 and there's this memorable uh, mercy speech given by poshia so for now this attempt uh, which was made by antonio to plead uh, to request shylock to show mercy it has been failed shylock makes his point very very clear that he, he is not going to play like a fool he is not going to play like the rel religious christians with dull eyes he 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 doesn't want to show he he doesn't want to he doesn't gonna is not gonna show any 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 drama of mercy on antonio at the same time shylock also reminds antonio about the past time about the past uh, where uh, you know antonio with 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 any reason he used to humiliate you know he used to humiliate shylock he used to uh, he used to spit on his religious garment he used to uh, hinder me a million something like that he said then finally shylock also reminds antonio that there was a time when antonio called shylock to be a cut throat dog and finally now shylock reminds uh, antonio that as you have called me to be a dog so now you should be warned of my teeth then we come to the you know an, a, 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 another part of the another part of the scene where shylock finally he says that he doesn't want to show he doesn't gonna show any 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 kind of mercy and finally he leaves a uh, warning antonio to be ready to give away that one pound of flesh now as soon as uh, shylock leaves the other character if you remember uh, salarino who too is present out here in the street of venice and he who was also there wh wh when this conversation was going on between shylock and antonio so he finally says that the duke will surely intervene and he will not let this bloody condition to be fulfilled okay and uh, uh, the duke of venice will definitely rescue antonio from the clutches of this cruel uh, jew 
But what about Antonio? Now Antonio tells us about the law of Venice. Now what is that law of Venice? Now Venice is a is a capitalistic uh, city. Now this particular city, there are international businessmen and 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 and, and, the, and the merchants of Venice who actually run this uh, city. And the rights and the freedom that is given to uh, the uh, the Christian, the same rights and and uh, freedom or liberty that is given to people belonging to other religions as well so if duke you know he he he, he tries to act partial he, he tries to bias towards antonio uh, and he tries to, he attempts to save antonio's life then the jew will have a will have a question mark upon the liability of the venus laws that whether uh, how far the law of venice is justifiable or whether this law it has been framed for the christians only or it has also some room for the non christians as well so from the point of view of law as i have written the last point out here the law of venice it gives equal rights freedom to every individual whosoever living in the venice and finally that's ho that hopeless statement that comes from antonio where he says that this grieves this pain it has it has made antonio to lose a lot of weight so possibly by tomorrow when he will have to he will be present to the court he will only have a pound of flesh one pound of flesh left in his body which will have to which will have to give it to a uh, shylock in the second part of the video we are going to move on to act 3 scene 4 just the next scene out there uh, Once again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you remember, uh, the, the 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 changing of the settings. Uh, 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 one particular setting is in Venice. The another setting is in Belmont in Portia's uh, mansion. There are multiple locations uh, uh, in Portia's mansion. So, uh, Act Three, Scene Two. If you remember, uh, Bassanio coming in and choosing the casket, uh, uh, the correct casket. Uh, the messenger coming uh, coming from uh, Venice and. Uh, Basario uh, Graciano living for uh, Belmont so back at Belmont uh, uh, there uh, there have been uh, two other characters who also entered if you remember that is Lorenzo and Jessica so uh, act 3 scene 4 it can be seen as a continuation for uh, act 3 scene 2 so in between there is this act 3 scene 3 in the uh, the first part of the video I, like I, I i talked about this uh, where we went back to uh, venice once again so in act 3 scene 4 once again we come back to venice where we uh, from the uh, to the point where we stopped in act 3 scene 2 so three points are uh, are 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 very very important as per as act 3 scene 4 is concerned so basically like i said that lorenzo and jessica have have uh, uh, they two you know they two arrived uh, in belmont so by now there's a conversation at the beginning of the scene um, among uh, porcia uh, lorenzo and uh, jessica so lorenzo and jessica the the two lovers from the time of their elopement they have been roaming you know throughout uh, throughout italy throughout Venice, is from one location to the other if you remember there's a, a character called tubal who comes back from uh, genoa with the news of lorenzo and jessica so finally with uh, jessica and in uh, and in uh, belmont uh, lorenzo and, and jessica both of uh, lorenzo and jessica uh, with the help of porcia in porcia's mansion they have got a permanent uh, settlement or you can say a permanent place for their stay so now they no longer Longer need to run from one place to the other, uh, as they were very very scared that at any particular moment they can be caught by Shylock. So, the first part of this scene, it is actually a thank giving, or you can say, uh, uh, yeah, you can say a thank giving uh, 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 a speech uh, that is uh, by Lorenzo for Portia. So. Here, uh, Lorenzo compares Portia to be uh, where, where he says that with Portia, uh, Lorenzo finds the god-like amity. Uh, he, he finds Portia to be uh, as uh, similar to as a goddess who is very, very, who is very much pitiful and who is very much sympathetic, which who has given them a place to stay. So, uh, finally. Uh, once again uh, lorenzo praises uh, porcia for her uh, for her selfless act when she at once allows bassanio at the time when he chose the correct casket 
to leave Portia and to go to rescue his amorous friend uh, Antonio who was in trouble in Venice. So, first part of the scene, Lorenzo basically praises for this selfless act uh, committed by uh, Portia. Now, in reply to this, Portia starts by saying that she has never regretted for doing anything good. She, she is not the one who, who, who is selfish. So, in order to do a selfless act, Portia has never regretted and she is not going to do uh, for in this respect also where she had to allow her, her newly acquired husband to leave her alone out here in, in, in Belmont and uh, to go to rescue his friend uh, in Venice. And if you remember while uh, the time when uh, Graciano <coughs> And, and Graciano and Bassanio, they were about to leave. Portia also uh, desires uh, to uh, live a life of a widow till the time they are, uh, till the time her husband they return, uh, he returns to Belmont. So out here, Portia she says that she is actually, uh, you know, a, a, a planning to go for a secret uh, woe. She wants to go to some uh, roadside pilgrimages, some something two miles away from uh, Belmont, and she wants to spend her time praying for the Almighty for her husband uh, Bassanio as well as his friend Antonio. And in this journey, only uh, uh, Nerissa would accompany her. So, by saying that, she says that her, her servants, they are already aware of her, her, her desire. And during this absence, the absence where Portia, uh, Portia, as she said that she wants to go and visit and pray in the in the road side shrines uh, till the time she returns back to Belmont. In that very uh, during that very absence, uh, Lorenzo and Jessica would be the master and the mistress of her of her mansion. So by saying that, she actually uh, hands over the husbandry of her. Her, uh, mansion in the hands of in the in the in the able hands of Lorenzo and Jessica and she insists that uh, she is very very confident that Lorenzo would perform uh, exactly what she wants uh, what, what what she believes so this is all about the first part of this act three scene three uh, act three scene uh, scene four let me correct myself so the first part of it, uh, where first Lorenzo starts uh, starts by praising Portia for her selfless act, and the next part of it, where we the audience they gets a glimpse that actually Portia is planning something. Uh, though uh, towards the beginning of this, uh, uh, towards the beginning of this scene, uh, her plan is not uh, something something vague. It is something obscure that the audience they are not sure that where actually Portia wants to go. But as as in the words of Portia, she says that she wants to go to some secret pilgrimage and during that absent uh, during that absence she wants Lorenzo and Jessica to uh, to perform as the master and the mistress of this mansion so this is all about the first part of the scene while moving on to the second part of the scene we come across the entry of another character called Balthazar uh, who is Balthazar Balthazar is a servant to uh, Portia who works for Portia who has been working for Portia since the time of Portia's father are a very loyal and a truthful uh, a truthful servant to Portia. So Portia calls for Balthazar, Balthazar enters and Portia hands over another responsibility to Balthazar. So Portia asks Balthazar to make haste to, to make it a very very fast and run all the way to a particular place called Padua. Uh, check the spelling out here P A D U A. And you know to do that, uh, <coughs> Balthazar had to take a ferry and he had to uh, he had to cross the river to go to Padua. And why why uh, Portia asks Balthazar to go to Padua to meet. Portia's uh, uh, cousin brother who, who is a doctor of uh, law in other words who is a lawyer and she also uh, hands over a particular letter to Balthazar to be handed over to her uh, cousin brother Balthazar and she also asks uh, uh, Balthazar uh, to do uh, to uh, to make haste and to get hold of the documents and some clothes which Dr. Bellario 
would actually Dr. Bellario, uh, the cousin brother of uh, Portia, would hand over to Balthazar and bring it back to the cross, bring it back to the transit, the, the transit that particular point from where uh, uh, the ferry, that is uh, the ferry from Belmont to Venice is available. So, in the second part of this, uh, second part of this scene, once again, let me give you a very brief introduction to this. So, second part of this, Portia calls for a truthful uh, servant, Balthazar. Uh, she asks uh, Balthazar to go to Padua to meet Dr. Bellario, who is a lawyer himself. And he, she also asks Balthazar to make a fast and to come back to the transit, bringing back the documents and the, uh, and the costumes and some garments which Dr. Bellario would provide uh, to Balthazar. Now, moving on to the third and the most important part of this scene. So, in the third part of the scene, there is no one on the stage except Portia and Nerissa. So, by, by now, uh, Lorenzo had already taken leave from the stage and by, uh, as soon as Balthazar, he received the, uh, he receives the, uh, the order as soon as he, he leaves for Padua. So, third part of the scene, uh, uh, we, we, we come across only Nerissa and uh, uh, Portia uh, to be on the stage and uh, in this privacy, we also, we the audience who have been actually waiting to know what actually Portia is planning. So, in this privacy, Portia gives us a hint that what is she planning all about. So, she starts informing Nerissa by saying that we are gonna see our husbands before they are expecting us to visit. And when Nerissa asks that whether uh, they would or the, their husbands would see them, in reply to that, uh, Portia, she says that, okay, they would see us, but not in, the, in our actual appearance, actual appearance of a female, but they would see us in some other appearance disguising as a male. Now, she also, uh, she also wages, she also boasts of the fact that when both Portia and Nerissa would be disguising as a, as a, as a male, uh, Portia would, would, would be looking more handsome than Nerissa. And she also talks about some, some characteristics that, that were associated with the males of the Elizabethan period. She says that you have to make herself up to be look like a perfect uh, man, she is gonna carry a dagger, okay? And she is gonna uh, proudly show this dagger to everyone as a feature of a manhood. Next, she is gonna speak in a in a shrilling, in a loud voice, which is another characteristic of a man. So she will have to replace her soft spoken you know, tone. Uh, <coughs> Generally, that is associated with a lady. So she is going to replace that, uh, you know, soft spoken voice with a loud shrilling voice of a man. Thirdly, she says that uh, she is going to replace uh, the mincing, the small steps of a lady with the manly stride of a man. So she, she, she will have to look like a man by the, at, the, at the end of the day. So and finally, she says that Another quality of a man to speak uh, puny lies, thousand lies and uh, lie according to Portia uh, is another characteristic of a man. So finally she says that these are the qualities, these are the characteristics, these are the uh, artificialities she is going to put on to her uh, as well as to Nerissa and they would see their husbands before they are expecting. And the rest of the plan she is going to reveal to Nerissa uh, in the in the coach she said there is a horse drawn, drawn cart which was waiting in the park gate. So. Uh, the scene when uh, when it ends, uh, Portia looks very very excited as she has got a plan in hand. Maybe this plan someone uh, somehow it would connect uh, to the main plot of the play. If you remember Antonio's safety, so the revelation of this uh, secret bow, as uh, in the words of uh, Portia, she says that she wants to go to some uh, secret pilgrimage. So where exactly Portia and Nerissa are going? This would uh, be clear when you go to. Act for scene one. Thank you.